six months ago, we said goodbye to our family, left Missouri, and found our way to our new life on a sailboat in Annapolis. After all the learning experiences I've had in my life, and trust me, I've had a few, this is the most challenging and difficult thing I've ever done. It's funny how some things hard get easier and your mind gives way to more. And now it's time to complete all the tasks at hand and learn to sail the Chesapeake preparing for a thousand nautical mile sail down the eastern shores of America. But for me, this is more than just another project. It's a combination of 10 year dream of sailing the world. I can't think of a better way to end this season but to share it with you and start a new chapter sailing the Chesapeake. So let's go take a, couple, a look at a couple of the boats that we looked at before we bought the Bohemia. And I can't think of a better way to end this last season with some Delos music from where it all started. Before I get tearied up, let's go take a look. All right, so now that I've regained my composure, the first boat that caught our eye was a Pearson 424. And she cost, she, they wanted $45,000. And we were in Florida hanging out with Shelly's parents and just looking around. And when I walked in it, it was small. It looked small to me, but she seemed to that it was big enough. But anyway, it had a Ford V berth for the bed, and then it had a captain's bed at the bottom of the companionway with the nav station next to the bed. So it was kind of a unique setup that I've never seen in another boat. And so, but when we called back and when we were really ready to buy a boat, she was gone. So now you got to remember, I've never owned a big sailboat before. So I was working with a broker and the next boat we looked at was a Catalina 42. And the place where they make the boat there in St. Petersburg is like 10 minutes away. So you could get every part, just go up to the part store and buy the part for it, what you needed. You know, and the thing about getting a place a slip in in Tampa or St. Petersburg is you have to buy the boat and the, you get the slip with it because usually you're going to have to wait two years to a year maybe even more to find you a slip for it, especially if you have a big boat and uh, we backed out we st I still didn't feel like it was big enough and so we moved on and then one day we found her the Bohemian Thank you, Delos. Everybody knows I got this boat for a pretty good price. This is why, one of the reasons why. That's the quadrant for the rudder. So let's go down in there and take a look. Uh, you can see all that rust, but it looks bad, but it's not that bad. So that platform right there, you see where all that rust is? That should be one big sheet of stainless steel. That's three coats of Primacote from Interlux. And I'm gonna put Flex Seal for the next two coats. And then that piece of steel right there goes all the way down into the skeg. So it's, it strengthens the skeg up. So now I'm making a part that's flat that goes across the top and ties into the walls and the framing. And that's what strengthens your, uh, your skate. 
So I don't know why they didn't. They should have put bronze or stainless steel down in there, but they didn't. So it's steel, it is what it is. So everything's time consuming. If once I put the epoxy in, I have to wait for it to cure. And I don't know, I had slow hardener. I didn't have the fast hardener. So it's probably gonna take four, eight, I don't know, four hours. I hope, I hope it's only four hours. And then you have to wait for it to dry. Then you got to put the coats of primer on and it says six coats of primer for to do it right. And that's going to take a day or two. And everything's a project. Oh, I mean, you have to do more than one project at the same time. So I get this done I go do something else, come back. So it's just time consuming. Everything's time consuming. And I don't really like fiberglass work, man. That's some sucky ass job. That's boring. It's like being a little third grade class and have to do paper mache it's the same shit but you got to do all this sanding and crap and i don't really want to do it if i had money to blow i'd pay somebody to do it so if you ever find your way up into annapolis donald shaw is the place to go to get any kind of fabrication done and if you want something made out of stainless steel or you just want to use steel he'll make it for you and he's got a couple of welders in there pretty good at what they do so I had the, I had it made, cost me about $250. And uh, let's take it back and see if she fit. All right, now, now you see how that platform sets in there? See how that post underneath, right there, you see it where it's all painted? Right there, goes up. And you see the part with that little box on the back, it sets down on there. And then you bolt, I bought some half inch stainless steel bolts that'll bolt onto that post. And then you see how those cup, they cup over the top of this beam. And then you'll, I'll drill holes there through that beam and connect it and then Right there, you see that flange that hangs off the bottom, that gets bolted to this wall all the way through to the other side. And then that whole skeg post that goes down into the skeg, now it's supported and it won't move around. And then right there, I'm gonna take a 45 degree piece of metal. Let's see if I can put my hands over here from here over to here like this and then that will strengthen it up to where if this here tries to move this way or this way and put a bunch of pressure on this beam it'll transfer the load up to that one which runs back and forth which is stronger it'll help it'll help a lot because last time it broke there it was too much pressure on it it wasn't enough so I'm gonna strengthen it up right there. And then right here, let me turn around. That's all new exhaust, three inch exhaust hose up, up and two and uh, one and three quarters. So that's the exhaust hose for the generator. And they go down in, to there. And the motor. And man, that stuff was expensive. That stuff was $39, $40 a foot for the three inch. And the one and three quarters was 18 bucks. And I can only find it at West Marine. I went to Fawcett's and they were out. And they had Vetus. Vetus you can get for 20 bucks. But it doesn't have wire in it. It's not as thick. It lasts for a while, but this stuff here will last longer. So you, but you gotta pay twice as much. So that was what, 600, 650 bucks just for two 10 foot links of hose, ridiculous. So we never made a scrum board to try to keep everything in, in order, but let's run through everything it took to get this boat ready to go just to practice out on the Chesapeake. So the first thing we did, we put a solenoid for the safety switch for the propane. We put a new platform for the pulleys, rebuilt the starter, Put a new alternator, redid all the bonding from the engine back, fixed seven through holes, bought new batteries, 
and that was expensive and the next expensive thing was having the sails redone and then buy the, all the rigging and then six fuel filters changed all the oil in both diesels two thousand dollar oh boy two thousand dollar toilets redid the engine mounts cleaned up the through holes on the hole cleaned all the rod rigging on the interior of the boat got the dinghy all prepped up and ready to go then we changed every rebedded every deck plate cleaned every turnbuckle bought a new chain new swivel rebuilt the fuel injector pump for the generator rebuilt all that rudder system and put it all back together nice and clean rebuilt all the winches and i'm sure i'm missing some more stuff but that's just all i can remember after all that work you'd think it all be done but it's just like owning a home the work never ends the next projects on our list are going through the three air conditioners and doing some plumbing work but it won't stop us from sailing so that's the end of the season and don't forget to keep on a dreaming up next on the bohemian we try our hand at sailing if you like the videos don't forget to comment and subscribe.